I still got the product placement there. Smart business. <laughs> well, Dustin, congratulations. Obviously, uh, I mean, we know what to expect when you step in the cage now, I guess. I mean, it was another one of those kind of fights. But uh, how are you feeling about uh, your performance and the result right now? Feeling good, man. I had 11 months to, to sit back and sit on a loss. And I was trying to get fights that whole time. Nothing came through. I, nothing materialized. I'm not sure wh whose fault it was, you know, but I was training back home. You know, just sitting on that, that championship loss, you know, it hurts. But it drove me to get better and come in here and get the W tonight. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, you had to go through some tough spots in there. I mean, he, I, I know you knew he was dangerous, but, I mean, did anything in there surprise you? or, or? His durability surprised me. Yeah, yeah I, I thought that if I hurt him for sure, I'd get him out of there. And I think if I, you know, if I had a couple seconds added to the round, I would have got him out of there. But I hit him with a few really good shots that he, that he survived. That was surprising, you know. Uh, he gets hurt a lot. And uh, I just thought when I did hurt him, I would, I would get him out of there. Seemed like you were pretty proud to get it done with the grappling. Was that like a point of uh, pride for you? <laughs> yeah. Getting submitted by Rene Kachok in my last fight, you know, coming in here and submitting a oh, former world champion to Rene Kachok, that feels good. What about what happens when you're in that rear naked choke position now, right? I mean, because I think we're all sitting there watching going, uh, uh, is this going to happen again? I mean, are, are you thinking that at the time? I'm just trying to fight the hands and defend properly. But of course, I'm thinking, not again. I'm like, hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> Nice. Uh, he, he was here earlier and he did say that, uh, you know, because we saw you speak afterwards. He said, look, I'm not going to tell you what was said. That's between two men. He was like, but it wasn't as pleasant as I thought it would be. So, I mean, when you guys spoke, can you reveal like what was said? I told him this is my house. That's what I told him. I said, this is my house. You know, that's it. Nice. And I told him he's a dirty motherfucker, too, for putting, <laughs> oh, his fing funny. for putting his fingers in my mouth and blowing his nose. And, you know, it's all good. So it's not exactly over, or it is over? Man, all, every, it's over. I don't hold, it's whatever. It's whatever. Nice. And I guess last thing for me, I, mean, I know you want to uh, celebrate the launch of the, of the new hot sauce and uh, enjoy yourself, but I guess, where do you see yourself going here? Because I know you feel like, hey, right there in that title contention, you're clearly one of the biggest names in the sport. Um, do you need time off? Do you want to book, I mean, you're thinking title contention? Like, what, what, where do you go from here? I did have 11 months off, <clears throat> but it's Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up, uh, New Year's. I want to be home with my daughter. You know, she's in first grade now, so when I leave for training camps, she's only able to come out for a limited time. We get a tutor. She stays on the same curriculum, everything. You know, it's just a long process. It's a different process now. My, my daughter's getting older. When she was in kindergarten, it was a little bit easier. But uh, we'll see. So I'm not sure what's next. Get home, let the smoke clear, start enjoying the holidays, and then we'll take it from there. But I'm sure it's going to be a big fight. I'm sure it's going to lead to a title fight if, if it's not going to be one, and it'll be another head-on collision. Dustin, over here, uh, corner. Right. Uh, at the media day, obviously, we brought up the fact that this was your first three-round fight in a long time. So being in there, did you feel like you could just fight differently, knowing you wouldn't have to reserve your energy for maybe two more rounds? I kind of fight like that if it's a five-round fight. Uh, I was more worried because after the second, now it's one and one. Whoever wins this round wins the fight. You know, usually you have a little bit more cushion there to, to get into a rhythm and try to pick the guy apart. It was a little bit more scary. Not that I ever take rounds off, but when you're fighting a three round fight, round one and round two is so important. You know, you have to start off fast. And you mentioned what you said after the fight, but it looked like you were talking to him in there too, maybe even after the round. Were you also kind of calling him out on the fish hooks and everything during the fight? I was telling him he was dirty, yeah. Mm -hmm. So a couple, couple quick questions. Um, when Michael was here earlier, he did say he kind of apologized getting the fingers, said it was unintentional, what have you. It was definitely intentional. Isaiah, what have you. Um, he mentioned, though, with the, the snot in the nose, like that was just gravity, and he needed to breathe, and it's just like, nah. sorry about that, man. That's just gravity. It's just fighting, you know? Yeah. It's just fighting. The actual serious question, uh, the rear naked choke that you touched on earlier, I asked Michael also about this, about why he was unable to get this, because he couldn't seem to get the arm under the neck. Was it something particular in like your chin placement? Was there some strategic, or was it just slippery? Or like, are you sure about what happened there? It's just getting choked by Rene and choke in two world title fights will make you tuck your chin a little bit tighter next time you're in that position. That's what it is, you know, living and learning and getting back to the gym and working my defense with Michael Brown and uh, getting better. And last question for me is, can we have a bottle of the hot sauce for the pizza in the back? I got you. <laughs> nice. I got you.
<laughs> Dustin right here. Um, this was your first submission victory in just shy of 10 years. Last one was Jonathan Brookins, December 2012. Um, is that like a nice relief to you, or does it feel better? I wanted a knockout, out? man, because yeah. I, I have most knockouts in lightweight history. I wanted to kind of start pulling away with that, you know? But a finish is a finish. A win is a win. I'm, I'm very grateful, man, and thankful that I had a great camp and came out here and had a fun fight. Yeah, and uh, 21 overall UFC wins now, uh, three shy of the record, which is 24. Um, is that something that's important to you to kind of be on there for, you know, one of the winningest fighters in UFC history? I know you take a lot of pride. For sure. That, that's a, every record that, that I hear when people talk about it that has my name in it, it's, I'm very prideful because it's, a, it's hard. These longevity records like that are hard to do, and they're going to get harder because everyone's getting so good, you know, to get that many wins is going to be tough in the future. When you see a guy like, you know, Frankie Edgar, who has one of those longevity records, you know, just shy of the most fight time ever, you know, get knocked out the way he did, does that ever give you, you know, thoughts of when the right time to get out is? Man, Frankie's such a legend, and to see the damage he's, you know, the fights he's lost and the damage he's taken, like, in his last, he's always taken damage, but, but wore it a lot better when he was younger. But, you know, being knocked out with the front kick, being knocked out with the flying knee by Sanhagen, coming in here and getting knocked out again. I really like the guy, and he's a good guy. And, uh, you know, you just hate, hate to see a, a, a legend go out like that. And last thing, um, today the UFC announced that uh, Volkanovski is moving up to 155. He's going to fight Makachev in Perth. Uh, who do you think wins that fight? I don't know. Um, that's, 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 that's a tough one to call. I'm not sure. Dustin, to your right. Dustin, right here. Uh, I'm looking over your record, and I, I look at... Justin Gaethje, Dan Hooker, Max Holloway, tonight against Michael Chan. It's like really close fights coming down to the last minutes, and each time you've dug deep and found a way to win. Just just talk about that for a second. That's fighting. That's what fighting is. A fight isn't a fight until there's an obstacle to overcome. Otherwise, it's just a sports venture. It's a fight. It's going to hurt. It's going to be ugly. You know, you're going to have to believe in yourself and pick yourself up between rounds and you know, that's fighting. And as uh, Mike just mentioned, it was announced that Makashev and Volkanovski is going to fight each other. That said, a lot of times when they have, and that's in February, when you have these mega big time fights, they like to have a guy as a backup way in. <clears throat> Would that interest you? We'll see. When is the fight? February. February. I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. That's a long flight. Cut weight. They better give me a check. Congratulations. Dustin, Thank just you. going off at of the back of that, um, Khabib actually tweeted his congratulations to you, and he also suggested you and Benil Dariush in Perth in February on that card. Would that interest you? That's, a, that's one that makes a lot of sense. You know, Benil's earned his stripes and, and put away some tough guys and has been looking great doing it. Um, we'll see. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not against it, but it's, it's ultimately up to the UFC and my time frame when I'm going to return. That's, that's what it comes down to. What do you think about the matchup with you and Benil? I think it's a great matchup. I think he deserves a top matchup. Thank you. Dustin, right here. Right here, to your left. Um, after, uh, after the win, you walked up to Mike and you said you were scared to fight him. Yeah, could you elaborate on that? Yeah, you have to tread lightly when you use the word scared and fighting in tough guy sports, you know. But I'm, I meant it as like those kind of fights are the fights that I want to sign those contracts that get me nervous and get me worried about what could happen that's every fight but there's more whenever you just watch the guy go to war with justin gaethje and you see the way he knocks out guys you fought and things like that i know the danger and the way he fights like what you saw tonight i knew it was going to be a head-on collision and that like it's a healthy fear it's a healthy fear and um you talked about Frankie Edgar's career and how it waned, you know, disgracefully, but with all like the damage he take he took. You're a, a fighter who's definitely not shy of violence. You get in these slugfests as we saw tonight. Uh, do you think about maybe pushing to a more uh, strategic, less violent style moving forward, or is it war every single time you get in that case? It's war. It's war. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Dustin. And just Dustin, before you leave, I spoke to Eves. We're over here. Eve said er day. Er I day. Said, I said thug jitsu. He said er day. Yeah, you better believe it. Er day. You better believe it. I know I made my boy Eve's proud tonight with the thug jitsu. Absolutely. Congrats, my brother. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Feels good to win.